hi. Uh, I'm Calvin Lai. I'm from uh, the University of Virginia. Uh, and we've got four great talks today about how to change bias. And so first up, we'll have Kara Kawakami from York University, followed by Margot Matif from Purdue, uh, Patrick Forcher from Wisconsin-Madison, and then finally me from the uh, University of Virginia. And so the format for the symposium is it's going to be 15-minute uh, long talks. Uh, my co-chair, Brian Nozick, will be the designated timekeeper person. Uh, and we'll try to stay close attention to time. And in terms of Q&A, uh, we'll have time for about one or two questions when we're transitioning between speakers. Uh, and then we'll have a longer period uh, for Q&A after all of the talks have been done. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, introduce Carrie for the first talk. Thank you. I'm really quite interested to hear the rest of the talks. So I'm going to go very quickly through mine, and uh, here we go. So what I want to look at today is basically different strategies that we use in our lab to try to reduce integer biases. My co-authors are Curtis Fiddle, Vicki Mann, Amanda Williams, and John Newman. So basically I want to talk about four different strategies that we've used. One is to look at the impact of associative training on stereotypes and discrimination. Another is the impact of approach orientation from self-black distinctiveness. Third is the impact of evaluative conditioning on self-black association and proximity seeking behavior. And finally, the impact of individuation on eye gaze and the willingness to interact with blacks. So the first study uh, might be a little bit controversial, but I believe stereotypes exist. And they influence the way that people respond to us and we respond to them. So what I wanted to do in this first talk was to examine ways we can actually reduce Stereotypes. <coughs> okay. So with raw participants in Philip, oh, first I should maybe preface this with, um, back in the 70s and, or 80s and 90s, when we first started looking at some of these automatic activations, people assumed that these were inevitable and really hard to control. John Barge described them in terms of this cognitive monster that kind of controlled their lives and that we couldn't get out from underneath. And so what we wanted to look at in this study was whether you could actually reduce it. And we used a lot of ideas from Trish Devine's uh, theorizing related to the idea that if we can negate stereotypes and replace them with other associations, maybe we can actually reduce some of these automatic activations. So that's what we did in the study. We brought participants in and we gave them a person categorization task to measure their interest in automatic act activations. Specifically, we told them we're going to show you a trait first and then we're going to show you a photograph. Your task is simply to say as quickly as possible whether the person in the photograph is black and white. And the traits that we use were either stereotypical black, stereotypical white, or filler tasks. We gave them 96 trials, and this was our, our pretest of stereotype activation. Next, we brought participants into the lab, and we trained them in one of two ways. We said we're going to see, show a picture on the screen, and underneath the picture, you're going to see a trait. For participants in the stereotype negation condition, we told them whenever you see a trait that's not associated, choose the trait that's a trait that's associated with your group, or that's typically associated with that category, respond no. So for black photographs and black stereotypes, respond no. White photographs, white stereotypes, respond no. However, when you see a trait that's typically uh, not associated with that category, respond yes. Right? So it looks something like this. How should you respond? No. Yes. No. And my favorite, yes. <laughs> so participants in the Oh, it's nice to take a big point. Stereotypes in the stereotype maintenance condition, we're given the opposite instructions. Now I want you to respond yes to typical associations that we have in our culture, and then I would not care there is typical associations. All participants in both training tasks received about 480 trials. And then after this training task, we simply gave them the person categorization task categorization task again to see whether the training had reduced their automatic stereotype activation. And the trainings and the photos used in this task were different from the ones used in the training. So we found a significant three-way interaction, and let me break that down for you. When you look at stereotypes first, we found that participants who were trained to maintain stereotypes did not demonstrate any difference between the pre- and post-stereotype activation effects. They were always very quick at those associations. However, participants who were trained to negate stereotypes Initially, they were very fast at stereotype activation, the traits facilitated category activation. Um, however, with the post-test, after training and negating stereotypes, uh, the traits no longer facilitated uh, categorization. 
When we look at the uh, non-stream effect activation, we find that the two-way interaction is not significant in overall participants are relatively slow in responding to these associations. So this first study suggests that it is maybe possible to reduce these automatic stereotype activations. What we wanted to look at in the second study was um, do these types of training effects, can they actually act, reduce uh, discrimination? In a more controlled context, can, we actually, can they actually have an impact? And so we looked at the impact of automatic stereotype association training on uh, job hires. Specifically, let's say that you just got a lot of money and you just bought a huge company. Who would you want to hire as your CEO? Someone who is dominant, independent, ambitious, and competitive? Or someone who's friendly, submissive, dependent, and caring? I would choose the first person. I think they could go in and get the job done. However, the problem is these are very common stereotypes for many women. So what we wanted to look at in this study was whether I trained you to associate different things with women, whether it could possibly reduce your hiring decisions. So participants came into the lab, and in the no we randomly assigned them to one of four conditions. In the no training conditions, we simply gave them a real ad from a job, and it was an ad for uh, and said, you know, a, 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 nearing, a nearby university is examining higher practices. You know, we want to know. We want to know how people make decisions in hiring. It was a real job. It was for a supervisor in a doctor's uh, in a community of doctors who had to go in and take charge and organize things. Um, we gave them two CV, or two, four CVs and four cover letters. Two of the CVs were from women, and the only way they knew that was because of the names, and two were from men. And we counterbalanced which ones were with which gender. And, and all the candidates were relatively well qualified. And then we simply said, okay, choose your candidate. Choose the person that you would hire. And in answer, and we expected in that condition, based on my little example, that people, participants, would overwhelmingly choose men for the supervisory role. In the training condition, however, we brought participants in and we first gave them a non stereotypic <coughs> association training. Specifically, we told them, we're going to show you a series of pictures of men and women, and underneath each picture you'll see two traits. We want you to choose a trait that's not typically associated with that category. And either both traits were positive or both traits were negative. So for example, here you would choose this trait, here you would choose uh, <laughs> this, right? So once again, they did 400, 480, sorry, 480 trials um, in which they uh, chose non-stereotypic associations. After that, participants in the second condition once again did the, uh, did the job trick, the job for the um, And uh, we know from previous studies that this, um, that the conditioning, the training did, didn't actually affect impact. Um, who they chose as a job, right? So even though they went through the 480 trials, we still found in previous studies that they were cho still choosing more men than women. And so we tried to consider in this study why, why that might be the case. And one reason that we came up with was well, possibly because they're correcting for what they think the impression is of the training. So if I give you 400, you know, 45 minutes of training and choosing um, non-stereotypic associations with women, you're thinking, oh, she wants me to choose women. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to choose men, right? So it's possible that even though they, uh, they've done this evaluative conditioning or this uh, stereotypic association training and they've reduced their automatic activations, more control processes, contextual motivations could have stepped in and influenced their effects. So that's what we wanted to look at in this study as well. So in the third condition, what we did was we brought participants in, we gave them non-stereotypic association training, and then we gave them a 10-minute break in which they completed a number of skill testing questions. And what we assumed, and then they got the typical job advertisement uh, task. And we thought with this condition, what would happen is we were able to disassociate the training from the job application task, the diff a different set of tasks. They wouldn't think the need for correction was so, uh, was so great, and so possibly they might not correct as much. In the third condition, uh, I'm sorry, in the fourth condition, uh, we included the training, we included the job advertisement task. However, while we were now completing the job advertisement task, we got them to do a probe reaction task. Specifically, what we showed them is when they're going through all of these uh, applications and trying to choose the best thing, a light would come on in the computer in which uh, they were told every time this light comes on, we want you to turn it off. So the light would come on, we'll turn it off, the light would come on, we'll turn it off. It happened around intervals of 13 and 31 seconds. And so we thought by being able to take away adding this additional task, 
their ability to control would be reduced, and so hopefully we would see a better results related to the training. So in this graph, this is the choice, the person, uh, the percentage who chose a specific type <coughs> candidate, a male or a female candidate. And when we look at the non-training path, non-training condition, we find that as expected, they chose way more men than women, twice as many men. When we look at the training condition, the same kind of effect as we found previously. So we're thinking, oh no, the training doesn't work. However, when you look at the training and filling tasks, there's no longer any difference now. They choose men and women to an equal amount. And when you look in the probe uh, recognition, or the probe tasks in the training, you actually find that they're choosing more women than men now. Um, and so this study suggests that maybe the stereotype activation, when you can reduce those activations, it might actually have important implications in depth, and even in control context. But when you're examining those control kind of contexts, when contextual motivations might be working, then you have to take those into consideration as well, and maybe worth the those. <laughs> in study three, we wanted to look at the impact of approach training on self lack distinctions. And typically, when you think of approach training, it's pulling something towards the self, and avoidance training is pushing away something from the self. So we thought approach training could actually decrease the psychological distance between ourselves and black. So we looked at that in terms of uh, ERP component of P300 to look at self black distinctions. So participants were brought into the lab and showed them a series of black and white photographs. For participants in the approach black conditions, we simply told them whenever you see a black person do this, whenever you see a white person do this. And participants in the avoid black conditions, we gave them the opposite instructions. Whenever you see a black person do this, whenever you see a uh, white person do this. Right? So they were trained to either approach blacks for once again about 480 trials. Then you gave them an oddball task. And the oddball task, what happens is, typically, uh, you set up a certain context. So in this, in this situation, the context, you set up a set of a series of white trials. And then you show them a the target stimuli, and you show them the context game. The P300 is an ERP, uh, is an ERP component that's sensitive to context target differences in the task instructions. The more that the target is different from the task, the larger your P300. So we wanted to look at that in the context of approach training black and white. And so when participants came into the lab before they took their training, we took a picture of them, and while they were doing their approach training, we dropped those pictures into the uh, oddball task. And so in this, in this case, we made the, the context the self. So this is, and we're simply supposed to say whether the person is me or not. So this is me, me, me. And then the target which came in one of these three positions was either, either me again, an angry member because this person is white, the angry member is white, a white person, and a black person. And what we proposed is in the context of the self, a black person should really be ex extremely distinct, and so you would see a large P300. However, we expected with approach training that should reduce the P300, and so you would see less distinctiveness, less attention to blacks in that context. And so that's exactly what we found in the P300. Maybe Inflake was the expert in this area, so let me try and walk you through this in some way that makes sense. Uh, we found a significant two-way interaction. So the P300, larger, not larger uh, scores are, are lower on the y-axis. And you'll need to find for black that uh, the P300, uh, uh, in accordance with similar effects down by Tiffany Edo and John Cacioppo, is around 400 milliseconds. So people are initially approaching, trained to approach black, you see very large P300. But with training and avoiding black, that's much reduced. You'll see the white participants, no difference in the approach to avoid training conditions, the same to black and So these studies suggest possibly that approaching cells, approaching training can actually reduce the extent to which you see blacks as being distinct from the cells. In related studies, we found approach orientation can reduce behavior, and it can also reduce self black associations and make it a racial attitudes. And we actually found that approach training can make you more pop. Oh, okay, so <laughs> crazy. What we wanted to look like in study, look at in study four was the effect of the value of conditioning on self black. So the extent to which you and you increase the positivity towards black, you actually learn to associate self more with black. And that would actually increase your trust in these two behaviors. So participants were brought into the lab and we simply gave them the value of conditioning condition or training, and what we told them whenever you see a black person choose a positive word, whenever you see a white person choose a negative word. Um, and we gave the opposite of the negative black association training, which is the negative word for blacks and the positive word for whites. Once again, 480 trials. And then we gave them a self black IAT. I'm not going to explain what that is here, but you guys probably know better than I am. And then after completing the self black IAT, in which we looked at the extent to which people associated themselves with black, we gave them a seating with some staff. We said the next task, you're going to look at a movie, but we're just preparing that right now. 
Who can you share? Oh yeah, and Lamar is sitting right here. That's a backpack. You just went up to the, the bathroom for a second, and it's going to be right back. Just choose the chair that you want. And then they chose the chair from, and we know the chairs from one to seven. The closer chairs may seat you got more of your proximity to the behavior. When we look at the effects, we find that people who are associating positive uh, traits with blacks show a much higher, uh, were, were much more likely, or were much faster associating themselves with blacks than people who uh, received the negative association training. Um, when we look at the distance towards black, people who were trained to associate positive things with black, that closer than people who were trained to associate negative things with black, however, that's a marginal effect. And when we look at uh, the mediational effects, we find actually that to some extent, but again, this is a small effect, that the more that you, uh, the more that positive association training reduces proximity, uh, increases proximity seeking to black, uh, is to some extent explained by self black association. The final study that I want to talk about is related to some of our more recent work on eye tracking. What we wanted to look at here was the effect, extent to which people attend the eyes when they're blacks and whites, how individuation motivations can influence that, and the relationship between attention to the eyes and the willingness to interact with blacks. Okay, so participants brought into the lab, we said we're going to put you in an eye tracking task, and we're going to monitor your eye gaze. We want, uh, and then we're going to ask you a recognition task. For half of them, we told them, uh, for every black person that you can remember from this eye tracking task, I'll give you 25 cents. And participants in the white individual white conditions, for every white person you can remember, I'm going to give you 25 cents. We put them in the eye tracking task, in which they found two faces, the black and white person would simply track where they're, what, what areas they were attending to. Specifically, we, uh, have a, we calculated the amount of time they're looking at the eyes, the nose and the mouth, and divided the black, the black and white faces, and we divided that by seven seconds, the total amount of time they were spending exposed. After that, we gave them a partner choice recognition task, in which we showed them a quadrant of four faces. Two were from the eye tracking task, two were from the new. And we simply said, in an upcoming task, it's possible you could work with one of these people. Please choose the person that you would want to work with in the task. And we simply calculated partner choice scores. The total number of times they chose an old black face, new black face, old white, new black face. And the eye gaze pattern, this is a significant three-way interaction. And what we found when we look at the individual white position, participants are tending much more to the eyes of white than black. There's no difference in the nose, uh, attention to the nose or to the mouth. When we look at the individual white black conditions, we find that the participants, uh, in contrast, now attend much more to the eyes of black than white and to nose of blacks and whites, and to most blacks and whites. When we look at the partner choice condition, a significant three-way interaction, and we look at um, the new faces, there's no difference in the individual white and black condition. They will always choose more whites than blacks. Enough. When we look at the individual black condition, however, in indi or, sorry, at the old faces, however, <laughs> you know, they now uh, choose in the individual white condition, they choose much, many more white partners of black faces in the individual black conditions. That's no longer significant. Okay. When we look at mediational analyses, we find um, once again that the extent to which people are, uh, when you uh, instruct people to individuate blacks, they choose uh, to a lesser extent a white over a black old partner. And uh, it's mediated by uh, increased attention to the eyes of black. <laughs> so um, what I'm trying to show in this study is really kind of a, just a blink, a really fast uh, it's a snapshot of some of the uh, methods that we use in our lab, right from associative training to approach orientation to evaluative conditioning to individuation motivations, and find that all of these types of um, strategies can actually help to reduce implicit and explicit prejudice.
types of strategies, not exactly similar strategies, but these types of strategies, that's what we're talking about. 